Can I ask you a question, Abner? Right now, all over the media, everywhere across the world, is the story of Ravi Zacharias. Mm -hmm. And you all probably have seen that, a Christian apologist for decades and decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of a sudden, it's discovered toward the end of his life that he's having all these sexual liaisons, mm -hmm. and it turns out that it's, it's gone on for years and years and years. And the question keeps coming up, can a Christian behave like that? Um, is that is that possible at that level, at that depth, uh, on that sort of long-range kind of experience? Or are, do we have a right to question the, the, the salvation of someone like that? If Ravi was alive, let's do it this way, and we know he's not, but if there was a person like him alive, living in that pattern of sin, not fighting against it. We have no evidence to know if he was fighting against it. We have evidence to the contrary. So you have someone who's unrepentant, and they're doing these things, and they come to you. Would you say, without question, you are a Christian? Would you say that to somebody like that? The answer probably would be, no, I would go to them and do exactly what <clears throat> was prayed this morning, which is to make sure we're in the faith. Yes, you would challenge that person, wouldn't you? You would read them First John, maybe several times, and say, are you in the faith? And although we don't know what is in a person's heart, even to the last second of their breath on this earth, nevertheless, the fruit speaks. And I think that, is, that needs to be said. And it's a warning to us. And it's also, and it goes back to the nature and the need for the local church, and for the church to be the church, when we see these problems of somebody not attending church and not being part of the fellowship because they're in some kind of grander ministry, we should raise a red flag because there is nothing in Scripture that says you have to preach across the country. There is everything in Scripture that says you need to be in church mm -hmm. when they meet. So there is no world or universe in the Bible where it says certain people get an exception mm -hmm. to obeying the Bible. Mm -hmm. There is no category for that. And therefore... These are serious issues, and they should have been raised, and if they were raised, and the church was the church, we could avoid this, and maybe even help somebody repent that might have been a Christian. Just to, to add to the, that, that answer, in order to live that way, when you're a high-profile preacher, you have to be sinning in multiple categories to cover that. You've got to be lying about where you were, what you did, who you talked to. You've got to fabricate lies at a complex level with all the people who are around you, with all the people you're, you're going to someplace, and you've got to, you've got to hide your life from them. You, you've got to lie about the past and where you were, who you talked to. Oops. Oh, uh, no. Secure that. Yeah. What, what you did, in other words, the machinations around that sin are massive. Mm -hmm. And that kind of fabrication, living at that level of creating a false life, certainly comes into the category of, of 1 John. Yeah. So, you know, that's why the questions have come up, is, is Ravi in hell? And that's, that's a very fair question. And your answer is right. If you confronted that while he was alive, you would say to him, the Bible is explicit that that kind of life is characteristic of someone who's not going to be in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And, and if I could just jump in, I know you heard this, but I want to make sure you heard this. The benefit of the local church, the essential benefit, one of the essential benefits of the local church is having community around you to support the desire of God in you. And if you don't have elders, you don't have shepherds, you don't have people that you're in community with who know you and are a part of your journey of faith and grace, you do not enjoy sufficient support to be sanctified and become like Christ. And I think of what I heard Abner say was the traveling life can be an isolated life. And the in-community life has a greater potential to be challenged, to be exhorted, to be confronted, and to be encouraged to be what Christ wants you to be. And another footnote to that, um, 
I, I've interacted with him a number of times through the years at various conferences. Um, I always said this privately. He never, ever, ever quotes the scripture. Never. It's always some kind of philosophical argument. And the dead giveaway is that it, the Word of God is God's sanctifying tool. And it just wasn't a part of his life. That, to me, was a dead giveaway. Hmm. 